Nvidia reported earnings on Thursday and the market went crazy. We can see year to date the stock is up over 172% thanks to this AI craze. But what if I was to tell you that the earning news is old news for Nvidia? Over the past weekend, the company did have a keynote and they introduced some amazing products. Let's take a closer look in today's episode. So Nvidia, less than 24 hours ago, just released their keynote that they did at Computex 2023. So Computex 2023 is this amazing trade show in Taiwan, I believe, which talks a lot about kind of supercomputers and kind of data center solutions. And in this space, and in this keynote, the company announced numerous new products. And I think in my opinion, it continues to show the huge strength of NVIDIA in the AI market. So let's take a closer look at some of the cool uh, or, or some of the cool products they announced. First, we're talking uh, taking a closer look at NVIDIA Grace Hopper Super Chip. This is NVIDIA CPU plus GPU product. They did announce that it is now at full production, which is great news, especially obviously thanks to this kind of AI craze happening and that it will be coming online worldwide in the upcoming months. They do mention that global hyperscalers and supercomputing centers in Europe and the United States are among several customers that will have access to the GH200 power systems. And that's what they're calling this kind of Grace Hopper super chip. They're calling it the GH200. They do mention that systems with the GH200 Grace Hopper super chips are expected to be available beginning later this year. I do believe this is one of the great reasons the company did announce such a great guidance for the upcoming quarters. Outside of that, the company did announce this amazing, amazing supercomputer. So NVIDIA announced the DGX G2, GH200 AI supercomputer. And this is a new class of AI supercomputer that connects 256 Grace Hopper super chips into a massive one exaflop. They do mention that obviously it's going to use this kind of GH200 super chip, which is going to eliminate the need for the traditional CPU to GPU PCIe connection because they are connected within NVIDIA's NVLink C. To see. They do mention because of this, it does increase the bandwidth and the speed between data communicating between the GPU and the CPU. They do mention that Google Cloud, Meta, and Microsoft are among the first expected to gain access to the DGX GH200 to explore its capabilities for generative AI workloads. On the other side, they also mentioned that NVIDIA also intends to provide the blueprint of the supercomputer to cloud server providers and other hyperscalers so that they can further customize it for their infrastructure. They do mention again that the, the this supercomputers are expected to be available by the end of the year. And I, a few things that I kind of liked about this first, I do enjoy that they are kind of giving the blueprint to the cloud server providers. It kind of opens up this great partnership in my opinion the second thing it's pretty interesting every time we hear of this kind of generative ai push or kind of this ai workload i tend to see google meta and microsoft always in the forefront i barely Again, it cannot be kind of just publication, but I barely hear Amazon being one of the first to adopt these cool, these new products. So that's always interesting. Let me know in the comments below what do you guys think is the reason that we barely see Amazon kind of being talked about when kind of new products are being released. The other thing that we did see here with NVIDIA is they kind of created a new data center architecture. They call it the MGX, which gives system maker modular architecture to meet diverse accelerated computing needs of world's data centers. So this is pretty much that, hey, all servers are different. One U, two U, four U's, and all servers are used for different kind of purposing. Some might be used for telecommunication. Others might be used for high performance. Others might be used for a visualization and kind of updating all these servers take time. So NVIDIA is partnering up with great players like Supermicro. Supermicro is an amazing company that we've kind of learned about in my semiconductor podcast. Billy brought that up about a month ago. It's sitting at $100. Now that company's sitting at over $200. So make sure to subscribe to that, um, to that semiconductor podcast as well. Also, before we go any further, if you are enjoying the episode, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below. Are you bullish or bearish on NVIDIA? 
Finally, if you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, I have this amazing, amazing membership where I share kind of deep dives or a little bit more insight into the semiconductor market. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. So they do mention that, hey, these supercomputer designs that they are making are going to slash development costs by up to three quarters and reduce development time by two thirds to just six months. And again, it's great news for these kind of big super computer creators like Supermicro, like Ace Rock, like Aces, like Gigabyte, like Pegatron and like QCT. They do mention that QCT and Supermicro, which I believe is super bullish for Supermicro, will be the first to market with this MGX design appearing in August. They do mention that additionally, SoftBank Corporation plans to roll out multiple hyperscale data centers across Japan and use MGX to dyna dynamically allocate GPU resources between generative AI and 5G applications. And like I mentioned, the main reason is there's different designs for different needs here in the supercomputing world. And this platform allows for multiple form factors, which offers maximum flexibility depending on chassis, depending on GPUs, depending on CPUs depending on network solutions. So this is NVIDIA kind of doubling down on their kind of infrastructure market, right? They are not only the designer of hardware, but this is a company that has also become a top player in the infrastructure design of data centers and supercomputers. Kind of for um, moving a little bit closer, we did hear that NVIDIA is collaborating with SoftBank Corporation to power SoftBank's next gen data centers using Grace Hopper Super Chips for generative AI and 5G slash 6G. So they are saying that um, Arm Bay, uh, that SoftBank is going to be buying a few super chips and a few Bluefield 3 DPUs to kind of create their next generation data centers. And they're going to distribute these AI data centers across Japan. Obviously, great news for NVIDIA and their GH200 Grace Hopper super chip. And obviously, is going to kind of showcase the strength of their MGX reference architecture, which I was just talking about. Kind of kind of moving a little bit more, we do hear a little bit in the consumer market. NVIDIA does mention that, hey, even though you might not be a super computer, even though you might not be a super developer, thanks to the development we have created, or RTX graphics cards that are used in laptops, in PCs and in workstations are also going to be used greatly or going to be a great tool for generative AI models that are going to be coming to the consumer space. So great news there. Next, if we take a closer look, NVIDIA, we know this more of a, of a GPU company. Um, now they're also kind of known as a CPU company thanks to the Grace Hopper CPU. But now, but thanks on one segment that I believe many investors or many people don't under follow is NVIDIA's networking solution. A few years ago, the company purchased a great networking company called Mellanox. They did announce that they are launching an accelerated ethernet platform for hyperscale generative AI. They're calling this the Spectrum X networking platform, which is pretty much a chip with other of their chips to kind of create a better networking platform that is going to be amazing for generative AI cloud base. They do mention that the world's top hyperscalers are adopting NVIDIA Spectrum X, including industry leading cloud innovators. So again, we are continuing to see this. They do mention that NVIDIA Spectrum X, Spectrum 4 switches, and the Bluefield 3 DPUs are optics already available right now. And like I mentioned, they do mention that great players in the cloud server provider are getting great reception from this product. Um, kind of pushing a little bit more into outside of data centers and cloud server providers, NVIDIA did mention that they are partnering up with MediaTek to transform automotive with AI and accelerated computing. So again, we are seeing how NVIDIA is creating kind of this system on chip and these kind of GPU chiplets that they are going to be working with MediaTek to kind of create maybe some more 
custom chips uh, for different segments. One of these is going to be obviously the automotive segment. And we do know that, hey, these kind of automotive segments are going to be um, the, the automotive segment is one that is growing here. We can see MediaTek Dim Dimensity Auto, which MediaTek will develop automotive system on chips integrating nvidia's gpu chiplet so this is the great thing about this chiplet market right so nvidia has created this amazing gpu processor but maybe some other company out there develops some other chip and they want to kind of integrate them together to get the best performance that other company might not want to create a gpu because it takes too much money so they're going to go to the people who are the best nvidia and say hey look let's license this give tell me how much it costs let me get your chiplet i'm gonna integrate it into my chip and we're gonna make some crazy crazy super chip so even though this is pretty cool it kind of shows more the automotive segment and how nvidia is going to continue to win i think the great news here is showcases this kind of custom design this kind of form of licensing product that i believe nvidia will start to head on with their gpu chiplet design and their kind of custom products as well obviously because these chips are being run with some form of nvidia gpu chiplet they are gonna also run pretty well with nvidia software stack so not only does nvidia get great sales on whatever licensing or however they're gonna sell this gpu chiplet but they're also gonna have or, or sell some other software stack products because they're gonna well work really well with the with the kind of chips that are being designed outside of that we did hear a lot about how manufacturers and leading kind of factories are using nvidia's for numerous things to create their digital world with using the omniverse and also using nvidia metropolis nothing crazy here but it just continues to show that the world is moving to this digital aspect at the moment Next, they talk a little bit about their Isaac Sim, which is their platform for robotics. And I think robotics is going to be a huge, huge market in the future. Right now, we are discussing a lot of things like the automotive market. But I do believe in the future, the one that's going to be pushing a lot of growth out of nowhere is going to be the robotics market. So NVIDIA talks about kind of their software simulations, their kind of so their software stack here, and also some other hardware solutions and how certain companies are using these to kind of improve and automate and optimi optimize some of their solution workflows. Uh, they do mention, for example, NVIDIA brings advanced autonomy to mobile robots with ISIC AMR. Isaac AMR is moving out into early access with customers and Nova Orin, which is the chip based reference robots are becoming available for evaluation. So again, it continues to show the strength of their form of robotics platform. The two remaining news are once going to hit the advertisement market. WPP partners with NVIDIA to build generative AI enabled content engine for digital advertising. And this is pretty cool. It's kind of using all of NVIDIA's software platforms and then going and partnering up with other players. For example, we know that NVIDIA's Omniverse, you can kind of use that platform to create these amazing 3D models with other software stacks, like maybe Autodesk with maybe Blender and so much more, right? So what ends up happening is because you have these 3D models, you can then use generative AI to make amazing realistic advertisement. And they partner up with WPP, which is a huge advertisement company to focus on the future of gen of advert digital advertisement right so i think this is a really really big win for nvidia and just kind of shows the different markets that they can explore the final one um, is another one of my favorites and this is kind of entering in the gaming market nvidia announces ace which is for games to kind of bring generative ai into virtual characters so this is avatar cloud engine like i mentioned ace for games which is bringing intelligence to non-playable character npcs through ai power natural large integration interactions so they did kind of showcase a video where there was this npc that no one wrote a story for him no one wrote a side quest for them um, they just kind of gave a basic background of this character and based of what was going around in the game this npc was able to kind of create its own quest and its kind of own dialogue to kind of get the, the 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 hero or the player to interact more with the game so i think this is pretty insane and we are going to see the future of gaming continue to evolve they do mention that game developers and startups are already using nvidia's generative ai technologies 
for their workloads. So, I mean, I think right now we did hear a lot of great news. I my, my favorite one is obviously the Grace Hopper and the kind of Grace Hopper supercomputers that we're seeing out there. Also the kind of networking solution. But I want to say my most favorite news was this kind of partnership with MediaTek because it just shows how NVIDIA is going to start licensing these GPU chiplets or whatever and kind of work with other semiconductors to kind of create some unique custom chips. So I think that's going to be a great move. I'm super bullish on NVIDIA like you guys know. Obviously, the stock has run up, but I wouldn't be surprised if this stock continues to run up for the upcoming days, especially with this news. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good day and see you next time.